Hello everyone, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use a PNG image as a mask inside of DaVinci Resolve 17, kind of like you see on screen. So to jump into it, let's go ahead and switch to a timeline where I don't have anything added yet. So if you want to add a mask to one of your clips, the best way to do it is going to be to go over to the Fusion page. So click on the clip you want to edit, click on Fusion. So in here you should see a media in one node and a media out one. You may notice that on the left side of the media end node is a blue triangle. This represents the effect mask input. So any node that you see that on, you can add a mask to. So if you want to load another image into this node graph so that you can use it as a mask, one way is just to drag and drop from your computer. So we can take a image, a PNG, and just drag and drop it here. So if we preview our media in two, which is the image we loaded in on the left hand side, uh, we can see that it loaded just fine. Sometimes I notice there might be blurriness around the edges of a PNG image. So if you have any issues, another way you can load in the image is to right click on the node graph, go to add tool, and then go down to IO and choose loader. So when you add the loader node, you'll have the option to select an image. So let's go ahead and grab this logo gimp.png, double click and add it. So if we preview this on the left hand preview, we can see this loads in just fine. So now we can use either of these masks for our purposes. So let's drag it over there a little bit. So if you have a very large image, like we can see this one right here, it's not going to fit the frame so well when we connect it to media in. Let's go ahead and do that to show what I'm talking about. So take the output from media in two and connect it to the effect mask of media in one. So we can see it's too big here. So a quick way to have it resized to fit the frame is to click on your media in one then go over to settings on the inspector and where it says fit mask, change that to do inside. So this will make sure that this input is going to fit inside the frame. Now, if we want to resize it further or adjust the position of the mask on our final frame, then what we can use is a transform node. So I'm going to select media in one. I'm going to right click on the line in front of it, go to add tool down to transform and then choose transform. Before we edit this, click on media in one, and you may want to change the fit mask back to crop so that this node is not resizing or adjusting the uh, mask image in any way. Now click on transform one and let's try resizing it. So I'm going to take the size and I'm going to lower this down and immediately you may notice part of your image disappearing. So to fix that, change edges from canvas to duplicate. Uh, if you want it to tile, you could also put it in wrap. And if I lower the size further, then you can see we get a whole bunch of the same image. That can be an interesting effect. But if you just want one, put it in duplicate. So now with this transform node, we can also reposition it around the screen. So I can adjust the center X position or the center Y position. And we can have this anywhere on the screen. Note this right preview window. That is the media out one node. So that is the final result of what we're getting out of this node graph. So our transform controls the position and the size. Remember to keep it in duplicate mode. And that is how we adjust our mask. So now if you need to animate the position or size of your mask in any way, you can still use the transform to do that. So if I take the transform node and just at a random point in the video, I keyframe the center position and the XY size. Let's go 20 frames in the future and let's change the position. So it might be easier to use the gizmos so that you can just position it exactly where you want it rather than scrolling up and down the numbers. Let's uh, take the X size and shrink that down and the Y size as well to match that. If you don't see X or Y size, it might be because you have use size and aspect checked. So just use it whichever way you want. Okay, so let's go to frame 340 here. You can see the white notches for the keyframes. We'll hit space. And you can see here that the position of our PNG mask is animating. So let's take this clip over here and let's do a different kind of masking. So we'll mask an effect this time. So I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to go over to the Fusion page. Let's go ahead and drag in our masking shape that we want to use. Maybe the Dropbox icon, why not? And then let's add a blur node between media in and media out. So click on media in and I'll click on blur, which adds a blur node after that. So if we take the blur one and we scale up the blur size to a high number, you can see it just blurs out the entire screen with a standard Gaussian blur. 
Now if we want to limit which parts of the screen are going to be affected by that blur, then we use our mask. So I'm going to take the mask input and connect that to the blue triangle for the blur one. And now you can see the only areas which get blurred are the shape of the Dropbox icon. So as I scale the blur up and down, you can see that more or less depending on how much we want that to actually occur. Now an interesting trick you can use for this is if you want the areas outside of where the icon is to be the areas that blur, then you can just reverse it. So if you click on the blur node and you go to settings, you can do apply mask inverted. So now the areas where the PNG mask are actually showing are the ones that aren't going to be affected where everything else is the affected part. And you can do that with other nodes that have a mask input as well. So if I connect the mask to media in, let's click on media in one and you'll see you can apply mask inverted here as well. So let's disconnect that for right now. And just like before with the media in mask, you can add a transform node if you want to control its position. So let's add tool transform transform and uh, make sure that you set it to duplicate so that when you resize it the whole thing still shows and you can just change the position using these gizmos on the screen or manually setting it in the inspector so that is pretty much all you need to know about how to use a png image as a mask inside of davinci resolve 17 specifically on the fusion page so i hope this video helped all of you guys out there i've been chris thanks for watching and i will see you all in my future video content